Good afternoon to those of you who are connecting from Singapore and good morning to those of you who are logging in from the UAE. My name is Mei Chan and I'm here representing the UAE Singapore Business Council. First and foremost, let me acknowledge our VIPs in attendance today. Your Excellency Jamal Abdullah El Suwaidi, Ambassador of the United Arab Emirates to the Republic of Singapore. Your Excellency Kamal Vishwani, Ambassador of the Republic of Singapore to the UAE. Dr. Brian Shager, President of the UAE Singapore Business Council. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our webinar entitled Abu Dhabi, the gateway for Singaporean business to the UAE and the Middle East. Today's webinar is jointly organized between the UAE Singapore Business Council and the Abu Dhabi Ports. We are privileged today to host experts representing renowned entities in the UAE, namely the Abu Dhabi Investment Office, Abu Dhabi Ports, and representatives of companies who have established in the Khalifa Industrial Zone Abu Dhabi, Kizak, namely Costco Shipping Limited, Jiangsu Provincial Overseas Cooperation and Investment Company Limited, JOSIC, and Controls and Electrics, a subsidiary of Bustet Singapore. The objective of today's webinar is to empower all attendees on the latest opportunities and incentives for foreign companies to establish in Abu Dhabi, including leveraging on Abu Dhabi Port's world-class multimodal transportation infrastructure that could potentially connect your business to 4.5 billion consumers. To begin today's event, I now have the pleasure to invite our guest of honour to give the opening address, the Ambassador of the United Arab Emirates to Singapore, His Excellency Jamal Abdullah El Suwaidi. Your Excellency, please. Good afternoon and good morning to the ones in Singapore and the UAE. Ambassador Kamal Vaswani, Ambassador of Singapore to the UAE, Dr. Brian Shigar, President of the UAE Singapore Business Council, distinguished speakers and panelists, ladies and gentlemen. I am pleased to render the opening of this webinar by goes by Abu Dhabi Gateway for Singapore Businesses to the UAE and the Middle East, jointly organized with the Khalifa Industrial Zone Abu Dhabi, Kizad, with the UASBC. I am I'm glad to note the involvement of Abu Dhabi Investment Office, who plays a pivotal role in the promotion of inward investment into the Emirates. I am pleased to note that we have the participation of two major PRC entities, namely the Jiangsu Provincial Overseas Cooperation and Investment Company Limited, and representing one of the richest provinces in China and Costco Shipping Ports, one of the PRC's largest multinational conglomerates. The participation of Posted Limited, who are an early investor in KZAT from Singapore, is also gratifying. Abu Dhabi is the largest emirate in the UAE, with a GDP of 249 billion US dollar. It contributes to 60% of the UAE's GDP. The Emirate has 95% of oil and 92% of gas reserves of the country. It also has over a trillion dollar worth of reserve managed by sovereign wealth funds. The Emirate is keen to diversify its economic profile and is promoting new investment in the non-oil sector, such as manufacturing, renewable, technology and advanced technology, tourism and financial services. Kizad, is an important, Kizad has played an important role in Abu Dhabi's largest, at Abu Dhabi's largest freight, logistics, and industrial hub. It is strategically located next to Khalifa Port and in close proximity to Abu Dhabi International Port and the facilities of nearby Dubai. From the year 2010, when it was established, Kizad has played a, a crucial role in Abu Dhabi's economic diversification plan. I thank the UAE SBZ and Kizad for taking the initiative in organizing this webinar. And I'm confident that Singapore companies will find Kizad an attractive location to base their operation in the UAE and to serve the Middle East hinterland. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. And now representing Abu Dhabi Ports, the main supporter of this webinar, 
I would like to invite Mr. Abdullah El Hameli, Head of Industrial Zones Cluster of Abu Dhabi Ports, to say a few words. Assalamu alaikum, good morning, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, firstly, I would like to say it is an honor to have both His Excellency Jamal Abdullah Swedi, the UAE Ambassador to Singapore and the UAE Singapore Business Council Patron, and His Excellency Kamal Baswani, the Singapore Ambassador, ambassador to the UAE, participating in this webinar. Their participation shows the level of importance both sides have put on trade. The lineup of speakers today is also a clear indication of how important this subject is for both sides. The UAE is, the UAE is Singapore's largest trade partner in the Middle East. Our bilateral trade is over 20 billion Singapore dollars at present. And there are many bilateral agreements in place to ensure that we not only sustain this, we uh, grow it further, inshallah. In the UAE, <clears throat> we have worked successfully in line with the vision of our wise leadership to develop the country and the Emirate of Abu Dhabi into a, ro a role model for logistics, connectivity, speed, and quality of service. Today, Abu Dhabi ports industrial cities and free zone cluster is spread across more than 500 50 square kilometers, approximately two thirds of the size of Singapore, which hosts more than 1,500 local, regional, and international companies called home. Within Abu Dhabi, we also proudly host one of the world's most advanced industrial infrastructures and one of the best multimodal transport system in the world. My colleagues on the panel will talk more, will take you through what Abu Dhabi has to offer to businesses looking to establish their presence in Abu Dhabi. And I'm looking forward to the panel discussion chaired by Dr. Brian Shegar, the president of the UAE Singapore Business Council. Abu Dhabi is always open for businesses. And as they say, seeing is believing. So we welcome all of you to visit us and witness with your eyes the development and the uh, Abu Dhabi ports uh, assets within uh, Kizad and Azazir zones. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. El Hamani. Before we begin today's workshop, allow me to first share with you the outline of our program that is being displayed now. For your reference, we have also shared the URL of the program on the chat window so you can refer to it at any time. As you can see from the program outline, we will begin today's session with a presentation and Q&A from the Abu Dhabi Investment Office, better known as AUDIO. If you have any question to, for any speaker, please type your question in the Q&A window. Please do not use the chat window for questions to the speakers. After the Q&A session with AUDIO, we will begin our spotlight on Kizet with a presentation from Kizet followed by a panel discussion where panelists share information and experiences on their company's journey into Abu Dhabi and Kizet. At any point during the webinar, if you have any technical or other issues, you can chat with our admin in the Zoom chat window. Without further ado, it now gives me great pleasure to invite our first speaker this afternoon, Mr. Mohammad El Hosani, who is part of the Investor Care Team at the Abu Dhabi Investment Office, Adio. For your information, Adio is the central government hub supporting investments in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi. Mohammed will be presenting on the topic of Abu Dhabi's initiatives driving investment, diversification, and ease of doing business. Mohammed, please. Uh, good morning, Abu Dhabi, and uh, good afternoon, Singapore. Thank you very much for uh, having me here uh, today. This is interesting. Uh, platform where we can uh, come and offer uh, our help and support uh, and also uh, build uh, effective relationship, business relationship between uh, the business community here in Abu Dhabi and a group of interesting companies and investors back in uh, Singapore. So uh, please allow me to uh, emphasize of what uh, His Excellency uh, 
just mentioned about how important, how strong, how uh, attractive is Abu Dhabi when it comes to uh, investment and economic uh, competitiveness. We, all of those uh, uh, components that made us the happiest city on the region and the safest city on the world. And we always uh, uh, rank very high when it comes to uh, top cities to attract experts to come, invest, work, and uh, raise family. In Abu Dhabi, uh, we don't work alone as Abu Dhabi Investment uh, uh, Office. We work in a collaborative uh, 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 mode where we integrate with the existing ecosystem, having Kizad and Abu Dhabi Port as very effective uh, player, as uh, His Excellency uh, Abdullah mentioned, that Kizad is a, is one of important tool for Abu Dhabi to reach diversification. It's, a, it's the largest uh, area when it comes to specialized economic zones where they offer free zone and investment zones and link with the state of the art infrastructure like Khalifa Port that connect us with the rest of the world. Although Abu Dhabi is very well connected uh, with the, uh, let's say, with the 80% of the population with less than eight hours uh, flight, uh, but we also uh, enjoy many advantage in Abu Dhabi. So we, in, in Abu Dhabi business community, we are very strong uh, linked with the uh, education and research institutions. We also uh, have very close relationship uh, with the large scale conglomerate uh, uh, investment and institutions like Mubadala and, uh, and ADQ. And uh, that made us always rank very high when it comes to uh, quality of infrastructure, soft and hard, and also uh, smart infrastructure like 5G and, uh, and others uh, uh, tools for uh, smart infrastructure. Now, what we do as Abu Dhabi Investment Office, simply we do all what you want as investors. So we are here to hear from you guys, how can we make Abu Dhabi your, your home, your next destination for business and uh, investment. So we can summarize our activities into three main component. We promote investment in Abu Dhabi. We also attract companies and investors to, uh, to the city and also we facilitate, we take you through all the, let's say, uh, process from uh, initiation all the way till you run and operate your, uh, your business. So we have three main, uh, let's say, uh, area that we cover, investor care. So we take care and good care of any businesses and um, uh, investors that look at Abu Dhabi as uh, uh, area of their interest. We also in, uh, provide some incentives and instrument, especially when it comes to innovation and, uh, and uh, research and development. Anything related to knowledge, we're gonna focus and have uh, very effective uh, support. We also consider ourselves as the central body when it comes to infrastructure partnership. So we are the coordinating body for Abu Dhabi government when it comes to public-private partnerships. So any PPP projects, we do, we play a leading role in making this uh, deal happen between private sector companies and government agencies here in, uh, in Abu Dhabi. So when uh, investors care, we provide set of information and guide related to real estate, related to tenants and visa, banking and financing uh, options. And we take you through all the steps when it comes to licensing and uh, permit to works. We also help uh, connect you with the right uh, uh, audience, with the potential partner, maybe potential buyers, and any, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, anyone on the Abu Dhabi ecosystem that you see uh, interest to partner with. Uh, incentives, we always consider our incentives in financial and non-financial. Financial, we provide a repaid uh, uh, program uh, in five uh, key sectors, financial, uh, services, uh, agriculture technology, pharmaceutical, uh, uh, ICT, and uh, tourism. Uh, beside the financial incentives, we do also provide non-financial support. So any assistance that you need when it comes to accessing the market, our investor care team will be very happy to uh, take you through those uh, offers and services that we, we provide. Uh, and again, we would like to see when it comes to financial incentives, we would like to see impact to Abu Dhabi uh, uh, market. So we targeting high skilled jobs to create knowledge uh, community here in Abu Dhabi and also increase the job offers for uh, Emiratis. 
uh, and we cover a big portion when, uh, of your operation when it comes to uh, OPEX and uh, CAPEX. That includes salaries, uh, feasibility study, capability buildings, and uh, many items in your operating uh, expenditures. Uh, infrastructure, we building very strong and effective relationship between us as Abu Dhabi Investment Office and different players in Abu Dhabi, especially when it comes to infrastructure uh, uh, operators and uh, uh, regulators. And we building uh, uh, ready to go investment packages to, uh, to call private sector to come and participate in Abu Dhabi uh, uh, infrastructure market. The, we're trying also to uh, create effective and innovative way of doing and running infrastructure facilities here in, in the city. So end of the day, uh, I'm here to say we are here to help. So tell us what you want. How can we make Abu Dhabi uh, your new business destination? You can reach us, uh, uh, us through uh, our colleagues in Abu Dhabi port or directly through our uh, channels and uh, and social media and uh, please consider that you guys from today having very good friend in Abu Dhabi use us consider us as your extended uh, team uh, we are here to make a case for you and provide all the re required needs for uh, for all the uh, you know companies that are interested to uh, come to Abu Dhabi thank you very much Thank you, Mohammed, for your excellent presentation. Um, it looks like we have uh, one question now coming in from Mr. Leonard Tagavalu, Director of ME Asia, Middle East Asia Consultancy. The first question from Leonard is, will audio play a role in matching potential investor Singapore with an appropriate local partner? Yes, so we always say uh, the more we know about you, uh, the more we can help and assist you. So many inquiries that we receive from global uh, uh, you know, business environment, people asking about our market size, about key players, about the regulations, about the policy uh, uh, in place. So all of those information will help you to identify your best partner. Uh, and uh, we are open to consider any uh, let's say, uh, uh, needed information or maybe uh, market analysis. So we go and uh, make it available for, uh, for you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Um, Lena's question also asks whether it's possible to share the process briefly uh, uh, on, on doing this. Because in Singapore, the consultants and experts are usually engaged by organizations. Maybe different organizations come together to uh, help, you know, maybe it's a single point of uh, support or what's the process like for audio if someone uh, wants to, to be matched up, you know, can you briefly explain? Uh, we are very flexible. We are a new organization. We are very flexible. We don't have very detailed uh, process when it comes to help and support. And again, we go by demand. So we are here to serve. So you guys, your need, your questions and inquiries shape our process and uh, and uh, let's say uh, initiatives. So it depends on on the ask itself. Uh, so we but don't worry about the process. We are very flexible. We are uh, we would love to be very proactive and very responsive to you. Your, uh, needs and uh, inquiries. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Sounds like people will get all the help they need, and you'll probably cater it to each individual's uh, requirements to help them, right? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. There's a second question Is there a minimum threshold of investment quantum that Adio will handle? Minimum? We help and support businesses in all sectors and in all sizes. So we deal with a startup all the way to large scale uh, multinational conglomerate uh, companies. So don't worry about the size, don't worry about the sectors. Uh, we're all here to work together with you guys to make a business case and make Abu Dhabi your next business destination. Thank you, Mohammed. Now we have a question from uh, Naveed Ahmad. The question is how many international offices does Adio have and where, and what support or services do these offices provide? 
So uh, currently we have eight international offices uh, and the kind of extended role of ADU. So they provide the same service that we provide an ADU main uh, office in Abu Dhabi. And uh, hopefully in the future, based on the needs and uh, the market trends, we might exp expand our, extend our uh, uh, coverage to other uh, countries. However, we can reach out to all around the, the world. So we are not only binded with those uh, international offices, we can reach out to any interested companies that would like to know more about Abu Dhabi uh, through uh, you know, online uh, connection or also physical uh, connection. Thank you, Mohammed. I heard um, there's a question now from Go Zen Long. I heard that Abu Dhabi is eyeing renewable energy. What interests me is if the Emirates would introduce renewable energy into their school curricula or seek to depend on foreign expertise. This is from Prakash, the editor of Mediacoms in Singapore. Uh, see, energy is, uh, is, uh, is a key sector in Abu Dhabi and we playing a leading role when it comes to renewable energy. We have uh, a company uh, championing uh, the uh, the development uh, of renewable energy locally in Abu Dhabi and also internationally, which is Masdar uh, Future Energy. So in Abu Dhabi, we host uh, the, the biggest uh, solar energy and the second solar uh, energy uh, with the least uh, uh, operating uh, cost. So we are kind of very much mature when it comes to investing in uh, solar uh, plants in Abu Dhabi and also uh, globally. So this is very interesting uh, topic, and the government already putting uh, big emphasis on the on the uh, the past uh, project and many other projects that will come uh, on the future. Thank you, Mohammed. There is another question. Um, is audio divided into different sectors for different domains? What is the approach process for each sector if it's uh, divided or not? See, simply, we cover all type of businesses, all type of investment, all size, all sectors. However, we do special focus when it comes to uh, something we call it growth clusters. So anything related to knowledge and innovation on those five growth clusters, uh, do have special programs. Uh, despite uh, the special program that we, we have and the special uh, incentives program that we provide, we cover and support all type of investment across all sectors. Thank you, Mohammed. I think um, that's enough questions for now. And um, thank you for your time. We will now um, move to our next speaker. Thank you, Mohammed. Um, our next speaker is Mr. Khalid El Mazuki, who is the Commercial Director of Khalifa Industrial Zone, or KZAT. Khalid will be discussing new business opportunities for Singaporean businesses in the UAE. Thank you, uh, May. Uh... Thank you, Khalid. Um, Khalid, I think uh, your video doesn't seem to be on yet. Could yeah, you check I don't. On that? Ah, it doesn't. Yes, oh, it is. No, Got you. Thank you, Khalid. Go ahead. No, okay. Uh, so, uh, Excellencies, Ambassadors, uh, Speakers, Distinguished Guests, uh, thank you very much, for, first of all, for your time. Uh, we really appreciate that. And uh, this is actually the objective is actually of this event is actually creating that uh, synergy of business networking, uh, sharing of data, sharing of information. So hopefully we'll be provide you with this short time to provide you uh, the right and the valuable information that will support you and make it easy for you actually to take a decision where to expand your business and how to you grow your industry. So let me just uh, share my slide. Okay. So first of all, uh, we today I am representing the industrial zones, which consist of Kizad, Khalifa Industrial City, and Zones Corp. Uh, we are part of Abu Dhabi Ports. So our mother company is Abu Dhabi Ports, consists which has actually 
five clusters. Already you saw maybe the video, uh, we have 11 terminals, 11, we are managing around 11 ports, one port in Africa. We have also a cruise terminal, which recently we opened and uh, uh, which has a capacity of around half a million passenger. We also have the marine uh, cluster, which is providing the uh, needed service for the marine industry. We have also the logistics sectors and we have the digital uh, sectors. So combining the four, uh, I mean, the five clusters together, we are able actually to provide a kind of package or kind of like a solution, which actually facilitate actually the international companies to expand to this part of the world. Uh, the group, the Abu Dhabi ports, it's part of Abu Dhabi uh, FADQ, Abu Dhabi uh, government holding company, which is actually one of the largest holding company here in, in, the, in the regions and also globally. Just to give you a bit of profile, just to, for you, just to have a feeling who we are. Uh, first of all, as a size, we are considered the largest globally, actually. Uh, we have a 555 uh, square kilometer <coughs> of land that is being dedicated for the industrial. And so it's huge. You can compare it to countries, uh, I believe like Singapore is around uh, 700 or 800 square kilometer. Uh, within that size, there we have dedicated around 100 square meter to be a free zone. So we have a domestic zone, which or we what we call it industrial zone, and we have a free zone. And we have more than 5,000, 1,500 companies already registered. And they are from different sector, uh, local companies, international companies. And within our zones, they have been employed over 70,000 uh, employees. Of course, in terms of connectivity, you will see from my slide, we are connecting to all the four model, air, road, sea, and rail. Uh, we also have a worker residential city and the capacity is around, is actually over 400,000. So this is the, what you see here from this slide is actually Kizat, Khalif Industrial Zone. This is, so this is one of the industrial zone we have. We have five locations. This is one of them. Uh, as a location wise for Kizat, it's actually sit between uh, the two main cities in UAE, which is Abu Dhabi and Dubai. If you have been here, maybe you are aware, it is only 30 minutes driving distance. So in the business aspect, it is between the two main consumer uh, market in the United Arab Emirates. Now, I already uh, explained that uh, we have a free zone and a domestic zone. And you see here from the slide, different colors, everything. So we have different zone, we have different clusters, and we have uh, facilities, for example, of warehouses, offices, land, that is actually developed either in the free zone or developed in the domestic uh, zone. So the investors has the free actually to select which suits them. Uh, normally, if the investor is consider will consider Abu Dhabi as a regional hub, normally they will tend go to the free zone because they will they will get the benefits of the import and export uh, duty free. And if their main market will be, let's say, not only UAE, GCC, and also maybe extended to other maybe uh, Arab leagues and the surrounding countries maybe the domestic will be more uh, beneficial because they will get more in terms of supporting from government regulations. Uh, also, as you see from this slide, we are adjacent to the seaport. This is one of the world fasting actually seaport in the, uh, in the world. Uh, it has uh, three terminals. Now we have the container terminal. Uh, today we have a presentations also, I mean, a representative by Costco in our panel. So Costco has invested in our ports and also MSC has invested in our ports. The capacity today is 2.5 million TU. And this is will be in, in next, just the next four or five years, it will reach to 9 million. So this is just to demonstrate actually the growth of the cargo, the growth of the logistic actually in Abu Dhabi and in this part of the world, as I mentioned. Now we have the liquid terminal. So this is especially for products which is like liquid. So liquid 
and bulk uh, liquid bulk uh, uh, cargo. Uh, we will uh, uh, start actually uh, the, the terminal will be uh, started from next year and we'll be introducing 44 tanks. We also have auto terminal and this is to support the automotive industrial. Today the capacity is a 17,000 vehicles. Uh, it is operated by Barcelona uh, auto terminal. Uh, Zone score it's another, uh, as I mentioned, entity under the, the industrial cities clusters. The zone score established in 2004. The size is 145 square kilometer. As a location, it sits, it sits actually uh, very close to the Abu Dhabi city. It's inside Abu Dhabi city somehow. And uh, it's actually very close to the projects that's in Abu Dhabi. So this is give you an advantage that if you are uh, having a projects within the Abu Dhabi city. So, uh, the similar things uh, in terms of product uh, supply, they provide you with the service land plots, pre-built facilities, different type of warehouses, light factories. Of course, you will have a dedicated investors once you have chosen actually to be here. Now, uh, what, what is specialized in, in the zone score uh, zones that there is an availability of built gas network and it's very approximate to the feed stock. For I will speak about the cluster uh, developments that we have and to show you that one of the main value propositions why international companies actually came to Abu Dhabi and came to our zones is because of the availability of the feedstock. Uh, they are also, we have also introduced the hub of, uh, the hub of uh, for industrial 4.0 technology and the business incubator. This is for the startup companies. Now, what we our focus is that we have an history uh, now it's uh, so during the last five, six, seven years, we have been focusing in the five points that you see here and that the, the drive of that focus came from the customer, our customer, it's not from our side that for them, it's the speed is very critical. The good thing that, I, as I mentioned in my slide, that we sit within Abu Dhabi port, which has five clusters. So we have actually, uh, we are the authority actually, and the regulator that we are, we can provide the needed support in terms of, for example, bringing your cargo to our port, clearing it from the port, taking it to your warehouse, all the way to your customer. So the whole supply chain. Uh, I don't want to go in details. I'll just give you some example in each point. Like, uh, for example, a speed. Let's say, for example, you have decided to open a company and you want to construct your own facility. And you don't want that the building of the facility like takes two years, three years. So we do, we do have a number of concepts in order to make sure that you will get your facility in, uh, in, in, in very actually uh, fast time. In terms of cost, it is the same thing. We are speaking about a cost of supply chain, of logistic, everything, and cost of the infrastructure, cost of the services. So we are considered very competitive in terms of our pricing when it comes to the, not only the country or the whole regions, because our mandate is actually to support the international company to grow and have a successful uh, uh, expansions using our facility. Uh, scale, this is actually our mandate. Uh, Mohammed has been spoken that one of our uh, approach that we try actually to work with you, uh, do the business matching, try to uh, link you to some of the projects that exist in the regions and in the UAE. And within that, we make sure that you can have stability options where you can move very easily between different facility, different projects within our zones. Uh, community already I spoke about the residential city. We are stations, as I mentioned, between Abu Dhabi and Dubai. So it's, it's a great community actually for uh, the international company to come here, bring their family, use all the services, schools, banks, everything that been established here anyway. Predictability is it's something in you that we understand that if you come and you do a visibility study, we will not give you actually the predictions of your, for example, let's say electricity price today and maybe another two or three years. No, we try actually to provide you all the projections of uh, numbers that you need to, to put in your study when it comes, for example, to different pricing, different scheme, everything. 
for the coming, let's say, 15 years, 50 years, 20 years, 30 years. So we, we, we have this ability today to make sure that you will have very clear visibility in your future. Now, I already spoke that uh, so far I'm being speaking of our general value propositions. Of course, we have a specific value propositions for different industrials. Uh, a specific value proposition, just like I spoke about, we have the feedstock, or for example, there is the, the buyer or there is the consumer, or you are close to certain project, you are cl close to the raw material or uh, wh whatever. There is, there is like there is at least 40, 50 value propositions specifically for the sectors that you see here. If I may list it for you, it's the metal automotive, polymers, food, building material, logistic, high tech, life science, which is a pharma and oil gas. So what I would suggest that if you are one of those sectors, please reach to us. We'll put you with the expert of that sectors. So you can ask all the questions that you need in order maybe even if you would like to start a new business here so you can ask all your questions to that uh, industrial expert in order for you actually to be more comfortable what and be more informative or formative what's happened in this region now one of our facility what we call the pre-built units the pre-built units you can start with three 300 square meter it goes all the way to 50,000 square meter 100,000 square meter and we have a different options. We have different size. We have different power uh, uh, supply. So it's, it's just facilitate your entry to the market. So instead of you build your own, we do have actually uh, at over 250,000 square meter of pre-built units. And we are building a double actually. We are getting support from ADQ and from Abu Dhabi government to build an additional 250,000 square meter. And from here, this slide, uh, for example, the, the new pre-builds that we will have, for example, will have a cold store facility. So if you are in the food or the pharma sector, uh, of course, the standard warehouse, but now we are introducing with the additional height. We have the light industry units. Now we have a capacity of, of uh, uh, further uh, power supply. So you can even do a, a kind of like light to medium industrial here. Uh, we have a showroom, so if you would like to store, have your office and display your products actually to, as I mentioned, we are in the highway linking the two main cities. Now, uh, the last point, last facility I want to speak about that I spoke about the free zone. Now, if you, are, if you would like to go for a free zone, also there is an option to have a dual license. What, what does it mean that you own the company 100% in the free zone? And with the support from the Abu Dhabi Economy Department, we will do with the same registration, we'll issue another license, which is in the local market. So the free zone uh, license, for example, will support you to do your import, export, or your business transaction, financial transaction. And your local uh, license will support you actually to do business in the local market, to, to tender for a project and to, like, to have specific things that you can do it within uh, the local market. Now, uh, I'm not sure how many of you have been to this regions because it is different region, of course, it's different consumer markets. Uh, it has a different, uh, let's say, features comparing to the world. Uh, now, when here, if you notice, I'm speaking about Middle East, uh, Africa, and Indian subcontinents, which is consists of around 3.5 million. The reason why I'm, I'm listing those re, uh, this, uh, regions, because when we speak as a hub, as a United Arab Emirates, as an Abu Dhabi, as a Dubai, when we speak that we are a hub, a logistic hub, industrial hub, we are actually the, our companies mainly, they are targeting this region. Now, this region is very interesting. I'm not sure if you have been expanding, exporting to this region. It's very interesting. It's growing as the population is large. And it's unique because 50, almost 50% 50 of the world young population also coming from this region. So you are expanding that the future demand also will come from this region. And interesting to know that this region, most of the countries in this region, they have a high, uh, uh, high GDP growth. It's like some, some of the countries even rose to two digital or 7% of growth in their GDP. 
Now, this is my last slide and really appreciate your time. Uh, just want to summarize what I have discussed in other words. So why, for example, considering Abu Dhabi, why considering Kizar, Zona Scorp or Abu Dhabi ports is actually, first of all, we, we simplify and uh, the company formations, uh, everything now online. While you are in Singapore, you can do all your system access, everything. Uh, we provide both the incentives of free zone and domestic. So you can benefit, of course, I, 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 because of the time limitation, I did not list all, all these benefits, but I'll be happy to share with you this presentation and the further details. Now, there is a new initiative uh, that came to the, the country, which even within the domestic zone, within the local market, you can own 100% for some selected sectors activity. This is actually a new things just being launched. So this is kind of like they call it like hot cake where uh, it's actually a good time actually for the international companies and come and take be part of this. There is a duty free trade and mainly GCC because GCC within one custom bounded area and also the GAFTA, the Arabian uh, country which are around 22. So if you establish the company here 100%, uh, uh, you will be able actually, you will have that made in UAE and you'll be exempted of all type of tax having uh, the business within that region. Uh, there is an easy access, as I mentioned, to Middle East Africa, multi commodity uh, connectivities, uh, sea, we are connecting to the sea, road, uh, we are this highway, if you just continue straight another four hours, actually you, you will be reaching Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia, as you know, is a big market actually uh, in GCC. Uh, air, within one hour or within like two hours, we, are, uh, we have four international airports. And the nearest one is actually Abu Dhabi International Airport, just like around 15 minutes drive from our zone. And we have the future railway, which will be connecting uh, our zones and will be connecting to the main cities in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, I already show you the slide which talk about uh, that we have already infrastructure that we can provide to you. And finally, the most competitive utility rates, and this is very important if you are industrials, Abu Dhabi provide the most competitive utility rates, which actually can reduce your operation cost all the way to 30 and 50%. Again, apologize for taking uh, uh, your time and be happy to be part of the panel. Thank you very much. Thank you, Khalid, for the very informative presentation. Thank you for all the slides. Um, we have questions for you, but we will hold it till the panel discussion later so that uh, when you are part of the panel, you can answer them. Thank you, Khalid. Now, it gives me great pleasure to invite Dr. Brian Shager, President of the UAE, Singapore Business Council to say a few words about the UAE SBC. Dr. Brian, please. Thank you very much for your kind introduction, May. His Excellency Jamal Al Sawedi, Ambassador from the UAE to Singapore. His Excellency Kamal Watwani, Ambassador from Singapore to the UAE. My fellow speakers, and panelists, ladies and gentlemen, a good morning to all our participants in the UAE and a good afternoon to all the participants in Singapore and this part of the world. First, let me thank you on behalf of the UAE Singapore Business Council for your kind participation in this very important webinar with Kizar. I want to take the opportunity to give you a brief overview of the UAE SPC. And I hope that you will, through this presentation of the USPC, realize the important role that we play to promote greater trade and investment connectivity between Singapore and the UAE. A little bit of history, the UAE Singapore SPC initially was mooted as a result of a very important FTA that Singapore signed with the GCC. This FTA was the first FTA signed by the GCC with a non-Middle Eastern country. It was Singapore's second 
FTA with the Middle Eastern country region. Uh, the first was with Jordan in 2004. The importance of this FTA is there are no tariffs. Uh, uh, let me share screen. I think, all right. So the FTA is very important to the extent that tariffs from the GCC to Singapore, 99% of it was eliminated. And as far as uh, tariffs from Singapore to the UAE is concerned, it is nearly fully eliminated. Now, if you go on to the other aspects of the setting up of the UAE SBC, we are connecting two important gateways to the respective hinterland. The UAE is the hinterland for the broader Middle Eastern region. Singapore is a uh, hub for the whole of the ASEAN region. So as a result, we are connecting two important gateways uh, for a very large region for further uh, trade investment expansion. Uh, the two countries also have very significant facilities that are offered to promote greater investments into their respective countries. For example, starting off with the UAE, it has been ranked as the most convenient place to do business in the Middle East and North African region. On the other hand, um, in Singapore, again, consistently, we are rated as the most uh, conducive country for investments and business. In the UAE, they are constantly liberalizing their investment environment. And now, as you have heard from Khalid, they are also broadening the, uh, the, the uh, attractiveness of investments by allowing 100% ownership uh, in the non-free zone sector. There's also the golden visa scheme, which helps to further encourage investors into the country. And of course, the free zones in the various Emirates play an important part as well. Now, in Singapore, the ESG plays this role as a facilitator of, 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 of investments and trade connectivity between Singapore and the rest of the world. And one of the things they do is provide very attractive grants and facilities. The UESBC is um, set up in Singapore, registered as a society, it has uh, three patrons. Two patrons are locally based. They include our ambassador to Singapore, His Excellency Jamal Soedi, and Mr. Ali Shan, who was a former senior minister of trade and industry and currently the chairman of Business China. We also have a patron who's based in the UAE, appointed by MOFAC, and he is. Uh, his Excellency Muhammad Ali Al Noami. We have an exco comprising office bearers and other uh, members who represent the corporate sponsor members of the Business Council. Here you will see some of the logos of our corporate sponsor members, and they include some well known names like Alpha Tame Group uh, and, and Danata, Barouche, etc., and Singapore names like Sabana Jurong, Olam. Global Schools Foundations, etc. Our activities, if I can summarize them very briefly, are broad, uh, broadly in a number of uh, sort of domains. You could say we have quarterly talks, and and some of the people who have graced this uh, the Business Council with their experience and wisdom include our ambassadors. Uh, to UAE from Singapore and conversely also uh, the UAE ambassador to Singapore, uh, like His Excellency uh, Dr. Mohammed Omar Balfaki, who was the previous patron and ambassador to Singapore, and other luminaries like His Excellency Bilahari Kausikan, who's chairman of Middle East Institute. We are also actively involved in organizing workshops such as this. And there are a couple of workshops I would like to uh, highlight, which are two annual flagship events. One is our annual 
oil petrochemical and logistics uh, uh, workshop or seminar and we showcase the oil and gas sector of the UAE a sector which is very important uh, to the UAE and also in terms of the presence of UAE companies in Singapore from that particular sector. Then in the in the uh, December period, jointly with the celebration of the UAE National Day, we have always a workshop to focus on a particular sector. Last year was the FNB sector, this year will be the IT sector. And in between, we host a number of webinars, and, and, and today's webinar on Kizad is one of the webinars uh, that are uh, reflective of the other events that we do in this particular uh, sector or workshops and seminars. Business missions are very important for us. Uh, it has been severely impacted by COVID-19 travel restrictions. Our first maiden business mission, which was uh, done in 2019, was in conjunction with the Franchising and Licensing Association of Singapore. And they, uh, we had a very successful uh, business uh, delegation covering education, F&B and retail. And uh, we had meetings in Abu Dhabi, in Dubai, which were very useful for the participants from Singapore because they met with very relevant counterparties and chambers, etc. So this is something that we want to resurrect and, and obviously it will be constrained by the travel corridor uh, being established. As a good corporate social citizen here, I, 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 I sort of very briefly uh, show you some pictures of some of our major corporate social events that we have done, which are charity related, we raise money for mines, which is a movement for the intellectually disabled. Uh, we, we also were involved in a very interesting e-recycling project with one of the constituencies in Singapore and we are given money for uh, as bursaries for Singapore and Arab students who are financially disadvantaged. We have another activity which we call networking and outreaching where we build linkages with other chambers, other trade associations. We believe a lot in networking because when we organize events we like to incorporate a participation of as many uh, trade uh, associations and chambers in Singapore as possible and we have very good relationships with them. I just want to talk about a few very important events that are upcoming when I would urge you please to participate in them because they're quite interesting. I talked about the annual oil petrochemical and, log petrochemical and logistics seminar which is going to be held in August and this year we're going to have a bit of a feature on the Fujera uh, oil industry zone as, as, as a kind of a spotlight, you could say. And we will also have presentations from the major players like Adnock and Enoch and Barouge and Horizon Turbidals. And then we're having a very interesting seminar this time focusing on women, women in business in the UAE and Singapore. I am sure you will find this a highly interesting seminar. We are lining up some very high profile uh, lady ministers from the UAE and Singapore and key business women from both countries to share their experiences and hopefully create a, 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 an opportunity for women in business to connect and, and do business with each other in the respective countries. So on the membership very quickly, we have three categories of membership. The corporate sponsor members have the logos in all our uh, material, all our uh, uh, marketing or collateral, collaterals, correspondences, and they sit in the exco. We have ordinary corporate members, individual members. And, and here you have a, a picture of all our corporate sponsor members to which of course the Business Council is highly grateful. And that concludes my brief introduction overview of the UASPC. Thank you very much, me back to you. Thank you, Dr. Brian. We have now come to the Q&A panel discussion segment of the webinar. I would like to remind you to type your questions in the Q&A window and not the chat window, as we will not be able to see them for the Q&A. The Q&A panel discussion will be moderated by Dr. Brian, and the panelists for this session are Mr. Khalid El Mazuki, Commercial Director of Abu Dhabi Ports, Mr. Nasser El Busseidi, Deputy CEO of Costco Shipping Ports, Abu Dhabi Terminal, Mr. Miao Fei, 
Commercial Director of Jiangsu Provincial Overseas Cooperation and Investment Company Limited, Josip. Mr. Prasun Chakraborty, Director Controls and Electric Private Limited, a division of Bostet Services Private Limited. And now I'd like to hand the session over to Dr. Brian Shega. Dr. Brian, please. Uh, thank you again, May. I have great pleasure in chairing uh, this panel session. And the way I would like to organize this panel uh, discussion is as follows. You've already heard the uh, very comprehensive presentation that was given by Khalid al Mazruki on Kizad. So you've heard that. Uh, Khalid is going to be in the panel and, and, and we'll have a number of questions and I'll ask him. Um, but you haven't heard from the other panelists and I will therefore firstly ask the other panelists, uh, one by one I shall invite them, to do a brief presentation about their company and themselves. And after that is over, I will kickstart the discussion by asking a few questions uh, to the panelists and also subsequently channeling some other questions from the attendees. So if I may uh, invite uh, uh, first Mr. Nasser al Busadi, Deputy CEO of CSP, to deliver his uh, brief presentation on, on Costco shipping in Abu Dhabi. Mr. Nasser. Good morning and uh, good afternoon to those who are overseas. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Abu Dhabi Post to give us this opportunity to uh, present the uh, uh, Chinese investment in uh, Abu Dhabi. Uh, if I may start my uh, presentation, please. Second slide. Yes, I would like to take you through the uh, terminal since the uh, starting of the investment. It was the signing concession agreement in 2016. And then in November, 2017, the groundbreaking of the uh, project itself. And then in December, 2018, it was the commencement of the operation. That was the trial uh, period. And then in April, 2020, we have reached the first million handling of the uh, TUs without uh, uh, and a single LTI with a total of 2 million of men working hours. Uh, I would like also to highlight the total investment of this, it's $1.1 billion. And uh, today uh, we are uh, handling uh, the uh, 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 big vessels that is around uh, 400 meter vessels. Next, please. The fact sheet of the terminal uh, we will come on the commercial part. It's uh, a joint venture with Abu Dhabi Ports. The concession agreement uh, uh, age is 35 uh, years plus five years of uh, extension period uh, option. The first greenfield terminal of CSP overseas. Uh, the phase one capacity is 2.5 million TUs. Total stacking capacity, we have around uh, 74,000 TUs. The facility uh, uh, fact sheet, which shows on the right side of the screen, the total key wall length is uh, 1,200 meters. Uh, the total stacking area, three, uh, 388,000 square meter. Uh, total key cranes on the key side, we have 11 key cranes and total uh, ARMGs on the yard side, uh, 32 ARMGs, and they are fully automated. Uh, the trail is 46 uh, TNT, empty handling, uh, handlers. We have two equipments, three stackers, we have one. Uh, next, please. The unique value of the term itself, it's solid base state owned company. Uh, shareholders' uh, strength and reputation, uh, strength the uh, infrastructure recognized and 
uh, a part of a, of a high level of services expansion possibilities for the future. Uh, home ground advantage, natural option of Abu Dhabi, ICAD, uh, competitive handling charges, priority berthing, and guaranteed productivity. Uh, alliance uh, partners support, which are the main alliance, the shipping from the shipping line, and the efficiency managing uh, delay in transit. That's a new facility that we have uh, recently uh, provided to the terminal users and our customers. Uh, Kizad integrated trade and logistic and that's a zone which is next to the uh, main port, Khalifa port. Uh, also, we have the new facility which is gonna be launched very soon, which is CFS Costco freight station facility. Uh, this facility will come in uh, later slides that will show how big is it and what kind of uh, storage uh, facility that we have bounded and unbounded uh, facility. Integrated with the Etihad Rail that will come also in very near uh, future. Next, please. These are the main liner services. Uh, uh, the terminal has been connected with uh, uh, Asia and Europe as well. Uh, we have a couple of uh, uh, main services that uh, starts from the ME5, Middle East and Asia, ME3, we have Middle East and Asia as well. Uh, uh, these lines are supporting the, the, uh, the terminal and the investors to import and export their goods uh, with a, a very short time. Now, if we're going to take an example, uh, any goods coming from Asia, it takes between 22 to 26 uh, days. And with the uh, support of the uh, pre-clearance uh, option that has been provided by Abu Dhabi Customs, that allows the uh, importer to clear his cargo before arriving the container even to the to Abu Dhabi itself. Next, please. And this continues of the mainline service as well. We have the uh, EPIC, which connects uh, Khalifa Port as well with the Europe side. Uh, we can see in the trade line, we see that the uh, European, Pakistan, India uh, uh, continent, and we have AG3, Asia, and Gulf uh, Express 3. Uh, this is also uh, uh, another advantage uh, that makes the uh, feeding option within the region uh, and frequency uh, continuous happening. We have a high frequency of the feeder lines as well. Next, please. These are the feeder network, uh, all that we have today in the terminal. We have the KX, uh, KX uh, calls uh, Kuwait, Abu Dhabi and Express, KG3, uh, Karachi, Jawadar and Express, the UCS, UAE Coastal Service. Uh, and then IG1, we have the Indian Gulf and then UAE, uh, UIG, UAE, India continent, and Gulf service. UCO, we have UAE Coastal uh, uh, and the Omani service, uh, OG Oman, Gulf Express. From these uh, feeder network, you can see how frequent that we have uh, within the terminal. And this allows to, to, to receive and export the cargo in a very short time as well. Next, please. This is the feeder uh, network coverage across the GCC and ICS and ISC. We can move to the next slide. This is the concept of the delay in transit, mainly the high demand now we can see during the pandemic of COVID that we have seen some uh, challenges in uh, exchanging the containers, uh, vessel calls, uh, feeder, as well, so we have promoted the uh, delay in transit starting from port of loading, and then we, as a terminal, are providing the uh, hub option for the uh, for the shipping lines as well and the customers, uh, and then it can go to the port of discharge, which is the end uh, the end user. 
Next, please. These are the supporting services that we have within the terminal. We have container maintenance and repair. Uh, we have shifting of external facility, which is uh, ITT internally with the uh, uh, Terminal 1, ADT. We have refer points exceeding 780 points for the refer. We have container cleaning and washing facility, container freight station, which is CFS again, vessel bankering facility we have, oil slide and water removal facility as well. Next, please. Uh, within the, although with the, the challenge of the COVID, we had a plan, a strategic plan that was to be implemented, and we have successfully uh, done a trial of uh, uh, a terminal truck project. We are started with the first six project, uh, six trucks automated uh, to be uh, operated very soon, and is expected to be in the mid of August. Uh, this would allow the terminal. Uh, having more uh, uh, automation uh, advantages and uh, technology that will that will uh, uh, keeps the customer also more confident of the terminal operation. Next, please. Now we're going to go through the uh, uh, Costco CFS facility, which is. Uh, uh, seven kilometers away from the terminal itself. Uh, the CFS uh, providing bonded and non-bonded uh, facility. Uh, they do the whole uh, activities for stripping, uh, storage, and uh, export uh, containers as well. Next, please. So the 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 one shop facility within the Khalifa port ISPS limit. So we have bonded and unbonded area as well, approximately 10 kilometers away from the terminal, uh, ports of CSP uh, global logistic network, uh, uh, state of art facility, most modern handling uh, equipments, uh, bonded and unbonded uh, warehouse, customs office where the facility, uh, refrigerated uh, general cargo handling as well, most modern, the IT system. Now, uh, uh, the with the with the Makta platform that today Abu Dhabi Post they have provided the customers, uh, it allows also booking and uh, delivery of the containers and goods and cargo within even CFS itself. So you can do the delivery and clearing of your cargo. Where are you worldwide? Yeah, anywhere you are located outside the UAE, you can do all these transactions without being physically available uh, in Khalifa port itself. Next, please. So this is briefly on, on, on our terminal. And uh, again, I would like uh, to thank you for giving us this opportunity. We, we can't hear. Thank you very much, Nasir, for your comprehensive participation. Uh, presentation rather, and I am sure that there will be some questions uh, that I will be directing to you in due course. I want to now invite Mr. Miao Fei, who is a commercial director of Jokik, to deliver his short presentation. Mr. Miao Fei. Hello, everyone. Uh, Thanks, Ambassador, and all speakers. Uh, I'm Miao Fei, Director of Investment Promotion Department from Jiangsu Premier Overseas Corporation and the Investment Companies, known as JOSIC. It's given me great pleasure to join you for today's webinar. And also, we'll be sure.
Mr. Miyafi, if you wish, I can uh, ask uh, Mr. Prashun to go first and then you can um, get your, your presentation organized. Would you wish, do you want me to do that? Hello? Okay, okay. Uh, I think Mr. Miyafi, uh, to give you a bit more time to get your presentation uh, ready on screen, let me come back to you later and invite uh, Prashun Chakravarti, who is Director of Controls and Electric Private Limited, a Division of Bastard Services Private Limited, and they have an important uh, operation in Kizad. I would therefore like to invite uh, Mr. Chakrabadi to deliver his presentation. Over to you, Prashut. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Brian. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, Your Excellencies and distinguished guests. I'm very happy to be part of this, uh, this webinar. And um, I am representing Bowstrip Singapore and uh, Controls and Electrics is a subsidiary of Bowstrip and uh, we have been operating in the UAE for the last several years. And I have a very short presentation um, uh, about uh, who we are and uh, what we are doing. Bausrid is uh, one of the oldest uh, continuous organization in Singapore. We were established in 1828. And uh, in, uh, you know, we are almost reaching 200 years of continuous operation. We were listed on the uh, SGX main board in 75. And uh, we are essentially involved in uh, infrastructure related engineering and technology uh, solutions. Uh, the markets that we serve are energy, both upstream as well as downstream, industrial real estate, uh, geospatial technologies, and healthcare. Um, we have a global footprint. Uh, we have projects implemented under execution and offices in uh, almost 89 countries throughout the world. Uh, we have won uh, several awards. Uh, Controls and Electrics Private Limited, the company uh, whose managing director I am, we are a subsidiary of uh, Bowstead. We are a 100% homegrown uh, local Singapore company and uh, we provide bespoke uh, critical control and emergency shutdown systems for offshore, onshore oil and gas services. Um, some of the products, I, I wouldn't go into the detail. I mean, so this is mostly for Kizad. I would sort of like it to remain that way. But very briefly, we do um, uh, custom design solutions for wallet control, shutdown systems, hydraulic power units, chemical injection skids, uh, fire and gas systems. Etc. Um, we have uh, we have uh, projects uh, from Singapore as a base. We have projects uh, all over the world, and importantly, uh, we have diversified over the last uh, several years to Middle East, as that is one of our key markets, and specifically in UAE and in Saudi Arabia. And in UAE, Kizad has been our partner and uh, we are extremely pleased to be associated with them and the help that we have got for them uh, to get our operations started. That's about all for controls and electrics, uh, Dr. Brian. Thank you so much, Prashun, for your brief, but nevertheless informative uh, overview of Bass Electron, uh, Electrics and Control. I want to now go back to Mr. Miao Fei, who I believe has sorted out the connection problem and could uh, be online. Mr. Miyafi, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm so sorry about it. Now not it's at all. okay. No worries. Yeah, so sorry about Over it. Over to network is a problem. Not at all. Over to you. Mm. So I suppose I share a scan. Uh, just a uh, moment. Well, I'm sorry about just now. Uh, excuse me, everyone. Uh, I just said, uh, my name is Miyopi, Director of Investment 
Promotion Department from Jiangsu Provincial Overseas Corporation and Investment Companies. No, as you are sick. First of all, please allow me to brief you on uh, where we are and uh, what we do. Both thanks about Halit. He already speak to say more things of Kisat, so I don't need to repeat again. Uh, China UAE Industry Capacity Corporation Demonstration Zone, adjacent to Khalifa Ports, is part of Kisat. Uh, it has two total plan area of 12.2 square kilometers, with a 2.2 square kilometers depth area currently under construction. The demonstration zone C it is as its blocked mission to push forward industry capacity cooperation, focusing on equipment manufacturing, fine economic uh, metal processing, new energies, and general manufacturing. I'm um, to set up a high quality plan for, for Chinese enterprise to invest in the growth region. As a key cooperation project between China and the UAE, the our zone was born with the following three features. First, it is bound by government. Uh, our zone was joint initiated by both governments. Second, it is commercially operated. JUSIC was confirmed by Saint Enterprise, a province enterprise and service national living development zone, a powerful combination in areas of industry park investments, development and operation. Third, the two side maintain close cooperation. As this golden term of a relation historic, we have been maintaining very good partnership with UAE in uh, just as AD port, ADGM and ADIO. Uh, with lots of cooperation, explosion, conducting in business promotion and finance. At present, our administration and service centers has been put into use. The infrastructure, include the road, living service areas, and the workshop is about to be complete in succession. And enterprise such as the robot tile and the new transition has started construction. As of today, we have signed 11 investment agreements in manufacturing with a estimate investment of 600 million US dollars. According to Stuxion, the total investment includes large infrastructure and the by enterprise will be exceed 1.6 billion US dollars once the 2.2 square kilometers that of areas is fully occupied. Uh, and also, we are bridge for the cooperation. Our main task is assistant enterprise uh, interesting in overseas to understand the local environment of UAE and realize construction industry investment plan we force on the plan industry in Kate in Abu Dhabi Economic Vision 2030 to edify in better facility localization of technologies and talents in Abu Dhabi, improve the industry system and meet the targets set by Abu Dhabi Economic Vision 2030. Oh, I'm so sorry because my skin is. It's not be continued. Uh, it's technical problems. I'm so sorry about it. Uh, no problem. Uh, I'm so sorry. Not because to maybe my secretary is uh, not doing. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no problem at all. This is uh, our industry zone. I will show everybody the photos. Uh, and this is we already have signed by the contract, the total values, everything. Okay, last but not less, I hope to make a more friend, explore more cooperation project, find after more opportunities through this webinar. Um to realize win-win and mutual benefit cooperation. Yes, thank you all. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Miao Fei, for your uh, very interesting presentation and it's very comprehensive indeed. 
Thank you again. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard from the panelists. They've given you a very good overview of their respective organization. And now I would like to kickstart the discussion phase in this panel. And I want to address a, a question or two, first of all, to Khalid al Mazruki. And, and the first question, uh, Khalid, for you is the partnership you have signed with Jokic, which we now know a lot about from the presentation by Mayor Fay, is a very interesting partnership. Are you uh, looking at replicating that partnership with other counterparties in uh, different parts of the world, Khalid? Okay, indeed, as, as you mentioned, it's a very interesting uh, partnership and such model actually uh, doesn't only provide the support only from the local government, also the companies, they are getting the support from their own uh, uh, government. So yes, we, we are uh, discussions with a number of nations uh, in order actually to expand actually that portfolio. Because uh, as I mentioned in my presentation, we would like to be a hub, a hub for the region. So there, there, there might be a lot of even uh, inter uh, connections between those uh, government agency, but also we try also to work uh, with the similar model also with the uh, private sectors. It's not only limited to the government uh, sectors that uh, there is, a, there is uh, some uh, bodies actually agency they are eager actually to support actually the startup SMEs and also big companies that it's new to the market. So yes, to answer your questions, yes, we are working with the uh, different uh, business, uh, private and uh, government agency actually to provide such services since that Joseph you, see, you saw from the presentation, it's actually uh, an excellent model. Well, thank you Khalid, I fully agree with you because what you have invested in Kezad uh, is in a very impressive infrastructure. And you have now been able to attract Jokic uh, to that excellent infrastructure. And therefore, it makes eminent sense to me that you will want to replicate this wonderful partnership with Jokic with other counterparties. Uh, another question for you, uh, Khalid, which, is, uh, which may be a difficult question for you to answer, but I'll ask you anyway. You know, in Singapore, we, we, we are aware that the UAE is very unique because there are other Emirates and the other Emirates are sometimes in a way competing among themselves, which is a very good thing because it makes the UAE such a dynamic economy. And I'm a great admirer of the dynamic competitiveness of the UAE as a result of this interesting phenomenon of the Emirates competing some way. So you have, for example, Jabal Ali who's been around since I think 1977, you know, they are promoting their location to Singapore companies. And then we have you. Uh, uh, you, I think, were set up in 2012. But of course, you, you've, you've been set up with a big bang. You have made a lot of uh, investments. And from what your presentation reveals, it's a very attractive proposition. So what kind of distinguishing features can you sort of perhaps point towards to Singaporean investors that may perhaps make them partial towards utilizing your services in Kizad. Yeah, uh, as you mentioned, Doctor, this is kind of, uh, it's not a difficult question, but it is a question that normally we receive time to time. And uh, I, I would say it is similar, for example, if you want to buy any items now, for example, if you want to buy, let's say, a car, you have five showroom or 10 showroom. Of course, you, you would prefer to have the Mercedes, BMW, and other options in front of you. Our objective at the end is actually the customer. We would like to provide what the customer needs. Now, if the customer finds what he needs, for example, in Jabal Ali, which is only 30 minutes away from us, that I will be eager also to push the companies to go there. If the, if the customer sees that Abu Dhabi and Kizat is more actually suitable to his business, uh, then we will be happy actually to serve him. So in, in other way is actually customer has different options. Everyone has different focus, of course. We, do, we don't have the same focus. Every zone anyway and in the region have different advantage, different things to offer to the clients. Clients come and evaluate that. Uh, for us, I would say that uh, I already spoken in, in many things in the presentations. I show you where is 
by by a name we are industrial zone so it means we are focusing in the industry i spoke about the sme how we support the sme i spoke about the pre-built units that we have so these things for the customer he will be able actually to go and compare the other zone and then he select what is actually best for him okay good answer Khalid. well done over to you mr nasir um i'm going to ask you a technical question which was put across by Mr. Kasi Viswanathan uh, on a rather technical question. I'm going to just read out the question. His question is, what is the rationale for ramping up the terminal capacity from 1.5 million TEUs to 9 million TEUs? Uh, question mark, is this for transshipment? Well, uh, if I may just to clarify this number, uh, uh, when my colleague uh, Hal he mentioned the nine million TUs, uh, nine million TUs is the whole capacity of the whole Khalifa port. So we're talking about two terminals. Now, uh, uh, in perspective to our terminal, uh, we have the capacity of 2.5 million TUs as a terminal. Uh, so this is just to clarify the capacity uh, terminal wise. Okay. Uh, that that's uh, interesting uh, uh, clarification. Thank you, Mr. Nasser. Uh, another question for you, Mr. Nasser. You have gone into a long-term strategic partnership with Cost, Costco, i.e. Abu Dhabi Ports and Costco, and similarly, Abu Dhabi Ports has gone into a. Uh, you mentioned it in your presentation with uh, with uh, I think it's uh, is it is it is it MERS. Um, the other large shipping company uh, that you have a relationship with. And, and as a result, um, are you looking at additional uh, such relationship with big shipping lines uh, and port operators? Is that, are you full up in capacity or are you looking at expanding such relationship with other uh, operators around the world? Uh, okay, now the cooperation uh, with the other uh, shipping lines uh, will never uh, stop. I mean, we are a service provider as a terminal. Uh, now, uh, to clarify, this uh, uh, Costco Group, uh, she is a, a big company, which is state-owned company. Uh, we are only a part of the that uh, organization, which operates only terminals, and we don't operate vessels or shipping lines uh, we as today uh, terminal having support from the costco shipping and their alliance uh, having the uh, long-term strategy uh, with the with the shipping lines it's providing services competitive rates and also uh, a quick turnaround time for the vessels their vessel now, going to the partnership with Abu Dhabi Ports, uh, Abu Dhabi Ports, they have uh, strongly uh, believed that Costco is going to add a lot of value uh, to the uh, to Khalifa Port uh, uh, going forward. Now, uh, as if today we are talking about 357 berth is operated by Costco, uh, plus the total uh, volume of Costco, they have exceed 180 million TUs. Uh, so we can see how big are they. Uh, today, the uh, terminal is connected uh, with Asia and Europe. And the shipping time, it came down to uh, 25, 26 days, where it used to be 45 and 50 days. And this also encouraged the uh, importers uh, to look at this as well. So overall, uh, seeing the partnership between uh, uh, Costco and Aldavi Ports, yes, uh, it was a successful uh, story, uh, especially that the terminal has been built in a very short time, which is 13 months only. And uh, within one year, they have reached 1 million TUs. And you know, Mr. Nasir, the reason I ask you these questions where you, in a way, can give uh, insight from the Costco perspective and the Abu Dhabi port perspective is because right. you come from Abu Dhabi port. So I'm, I'm so right. glad that uh, you, you, you are participating in this seminar because you Pleasure. can cover both angles. Now, Costco is very big in Singapore, 
um, and they don't operate a port here, but they operate all kinds of other services, shipping and logistics and so on and so forth. Uh, and there are, of course, many Singapore companies that uh, that want to do business in the Middle East. They, they, they export or trade with Middle Eastern countries, they export through the UAE to, to, to the broader region. Uh, what can you offer as Costco? Now, Costco as a group, you know, not just your 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 operations in UAE, but taken collectively, how can you connect the dots and say, look, we in Costco Group can do a lot for you, i.e., Singapore companies who are doing business and trading and exporting and importing vis-a-vis -vis the UAE and Middle East. What kind of value proposition can you? Give I can't us? hear you. You can't hear me. Okay, uh, maybe I shall. Is it is it is it I, better now? I can't hear. Um, I wonder why, because my, I'm not muted. Okay, I'm going to, can you hear me now? Yes, now yes. Okay, all right, now, let, let me recap. The question is, you are operating this interesting port in, 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 uh, in, in Abu Dhabi ports, but Costco as a group is also very large in Singapore. They may not be operating a port here, but they have shipping and, and logistics and other for other services. And as a group, therefore, Costco, uh, you could say, transcends both countries. And the question I'm asking you is, uh, there are a lot of people in this, in, this, in this seminar who are trading and exporting and importing vis-a-vis -vis the UAE and the broader Middle Eastern region. What is the value proposition you can present to our participants here about using Costco group services in terms of both what you offer in Singapore and the and Abu Dhabi. Uh, now the 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 investment which happened in Khalifa Port uh, to uh, to build up the superstructure of the terminal, it is part of the uh, initiative Road and Belt. Uh, the Road and Belt initiative, the Chinese uh, Road and Belt initiative, is to connect sixty ports around the world. So from this initiative, you can see that they can have the same support from, from all the terminals that have been uh, operated by Costco. Okay, well, that's good. The, the Belt Road Initiative is a very important development. And that's a question I'm going to now direct to Miao Fei. Thank you so much for your answers, Mr. Nazir. Going, you. To, uh, going to you, Mr. Miao Fei, um, we talked about the Belt Road Initiative. That is obviously a very important initiative. And which has tremendous ramifications in terms of connectivity, in terms of uh, business and commerce between China and, and the rest of Asia and the Middle East, etc. Um, now, in terms of your uh, investment and your partnership in, with Kizat, how can, in your opinion, uh, Chinese companies uh, leverage this? Now, in Singapore, we have several Chinese companies from the PRC and, of course, the local Chinese companies as well. Can you perhaps suggest how um, the, your presence in the UAE, in Kizad, as well as the connectivity you have uh, with, of course, China and Singapore in between, how can we connect the dots and how can, therefore, uh, Singapore play, uh, you know, an uh, uh, important role in this BRI uh, connectivity between Singapore, UA UAE, of course, and the PRC. Any ideas that you may want to share with us? Uh, okay, I just can share my experience uh, first about KSAT. KSAT's uh, unique advantage is the extensive size uh, and uh, strategic lo uh, locations world-class uh, infrastructure and the uh, fully politic support for the uh, Chinese companies. Yeah, uh, cooperation with KSAT, we can provide first rate investment, uh, environment for Chinese enterprise and help them invest and operate better. This is the first things. And the second, I just said, uh, our zone, it is a major cooperation project uh, of the two countries and uh, serving the it and the road. 
even maybe some countries said that this is not good, but uh, we are doing better, however. So, <laughs> the choice of the sitting in the zone will be help the enterprise fully enjoy superior business uh, environment and uh, promotion locate advantage of the UAE as the most of reliable platform to set the overseas development of Chinese enterprise in the Middle East. The demonstration zone where we have Chinese enterprise develop uh, both Middle East markets, so the most uh, competitive investment cost and the better management service and the strong finance support and the safety investment environment. That is what I think. And also what is most important for the enterprise to investment in the need of local market. That we can do, it is help them uh, sort out their investment idea from perspective of the enterprise and uh, tailor feasible investment plan. But uh, providing one stop, one step uh, service, uh, we can solve the uh, all problems, and we can help them develop the lo develop the local market and uh, solve the uh, worry about all other things. And the that is we cooperate with the case that and the case that can prove us with all of things. That is why we make investments and uh, I. I'm not sure that Singapore companies will be like Chinese enterprise, but we are almost same, I think, 70% the same. So maybe they can, this is, is a good choice for everybody. Uh, thank you very much for your answer, Mr. Miaofei. Uh, a question for you. You are representing Jiangsu province and you have a, a space within Gizad for Jiangsu province companies. Uh, what about companies from other provinces in China? Uh, are they allowed to use your space and your services? Is of that course. It's possible they are? Of course, of course. Yeah, we welcome not uh, only Jiangsu province and also welcome everybody, even about from the other foreign countries. Oh, it is okay. Okay, so that's interesting. If, so if a Singapore company wants to uh, be part of your space, uh, that is also possible. It of course is possible. Uh, and also we can help them. First, they can invest in case that with us together. And also, if they also want a business, make the marketing in China, in Jiangsu, also will be support them. So we can be connect China, uh, Emirates and Singapore together. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Miaofei. That's very helpful. Uh, Prashun, um, what I find very impressive is one, of course, Boston itself is one of the oldest listed companies in Singapore, and you have chosen uh, to really uh, establish something substantive in Kizad, and you therefore uh, should be a role model for other companies that want to invest in Abu Dhabi, and 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 your presence there certainly is a is an excellent. Um, sort of example that people can emulate. Um, before uh, uh, opening in, in, in the UAE, what were the considerations that drove you or attracted you to make this investment in, in Kizad? Uh, what are the general factors within the UAE in Abu Dhabi and the broader Middle East that led you to make this significant investment and establish a significant presence in Gizad. We would be very happy to learn from your experience. Uh, actually, for us, as sorry, Jason, uh, may I, may I, sorry, that question was actually directed towards uh, Mr. Prashun, uh, if you don't mind, because he's a Singapore company that is operating in Gizad, and we want to learn. The companies who are participating would like to learn from his experience. So, if you don't mind, I'd like to direct this question to Prashun. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Brian. I'm, I'm happy to hear Miafe's point of view also. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but as you know, Dr. Brian, um, our major, uh, most of our solution, engineered solutions are for the offshore oil and gas, offshore onshore oil and gas market. And uh, Abu Dhabi is uh, one of the, the focus point for uh, oil and gas activities in the Emirates. 
So it was uh, a pretty natural choice for us uh, to be close to uh, ADNOC, which is basically the Abu Dhabi National Oil Corporation. And uh, Kizad offered us a very good platform. It was uh, close to Abu Dhabi. It's not too far away from the rest of the Emirates, like the Dubai Emirates. And uh, we were lucky that we came across, we were attending ADIPEC and we came across a few of these Kazad uh, gentlemen and uh, they sort of, we got talking and they explained to us in how they could help us. And uh, that's, that's how uh, we sort of uh, landed up in Kazad and it has been an excellent uh, experience. Uh, what to say about it being a one-stop uh, uh, shop for setting up your company is absolutely true. And, um, we had our company up and running, uh, I would say in less than three months time, basically, which uh, given uh, the kind of efficiencies uh, uh, that we are uh, used to in Singapore uh, was a very pleasant surprise actually. Well, thank you, Prashun. Uh, it is always uh, an objective of the Business Council whenever we organize a webinar of this sort, to try and find examples of Singapore companies like yourself who have uh, generally gone through the process of considering options and establishing a presence in the UAE, in this particular case, of course, Kizad. Right. And I really thank you for uh, very kindly sharing your experience with, 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 with us and the audience. Uh, thank you, Prashun. I, I have a question from Mr. Leonard who's the director of ME Asia Consultancy Private Limited, which I want to direct to you, Khalid, if I may. Um, essentially, the question is, in terms of preamble, he says Singapore is um, a country that has been built on the success of the manufacturing sector, but now land is limited. You, you talked about how big Kizad is, for example. It's like maybe two-thirds side of Singapore. So land is limited here, and, and Singapore companies are therefore compelled to look at expanding overseas uh, to increase the market presence, particularly in areas like manufacturing. Um, and so the question is, is Kizad and Zone Corp open to high tech and traditional manufacturing, uh, traditional manufacturing, which perhaps can be labor intensive and space intensive? Um, and that, that's the question I would like you to answer. Over to you, Khalid. Yes, uh, I want to answer these questions. Uh, I want to start where uh, my colleague actually, Shakaraburti, he ended his conversation. He said the infrastructure uh, in Singapore is quite similar actually to what you have here and uh, what we have here anyway. Personally, uh, I observed this by myself. I did uh, a number of uh, business trip promotions actually to Singapore. And I have noticed actually how actually it was very easy actually for the Singaporean company to be, to be established in our country because it's quite similar infrastructures, both uh, soft and hard infrastructure. So I believe that, that there will be not much of obstacles for them actually uh, to decide, yes, let me go here or let me uh, end it here. So this, the two nation is growing, two nation is actually dependent and providing it's uh, both UAE and Singapore is kind of like service uh, oriented countries where we try to actually provide the service to other international companies. That's why it will be actually uh, easier actually for them actually to move here and establish. Uh, thank you, Khalid. Uh, that was my final question. And I must say that I'm very grateful for the answers that all of you panelists have given to the questions. Your, your, your frankness in sharing your experience. And, and I'm quite sure, I'm 100% sure that the uh, participants in this webinar have found it very revealing, educational, and I'm also positive that there will be more interest now in terms of uh, Singapore companies looking at Kizad as a viable location for their investments into the UAE. I thank you all again for your presentations and your participation in this panel discussion. Thank you, and I pass you back uh, to our MC, May. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Brian and all panelists. If you have any more questions to ask, you may contact the UAE SBC via email to contact us, which is one word, contact us at uaesbc.com. 
We have now come to the penultimate part of the webinar. It gives me great pleasure to invite the Ambassador for the Republic of Singapore to the UAE, His Excellency Kamal Vishwani, to give the closing address. Your Excellency, please. Thank you, May. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, very good. I guess we're good afternoon now on both sides. <laughs> both sides. Uh, good afternoon to my good friend, the UAE Ambassador to Singapore, uh, Jamal Al Suwaidi. Uh, Brian Shega from the UAE Singapore Business Council. I see friends from Kizad as well. Um, I think it was um, His Excellency Abdullah Al Hamali, and I saw um, Khalid Al, Al Mazuki as well there. I think Khalid, um, you had driven me around Kizad when I visited um, some months ago, and you gave me a very good insight into into Kizad. Um, and as everyone pointed out, you know, Kizad is 410 square kilometers. So I, I mentioned to everyone there, we're a little bit bigger than Kizad, but we're a little bit smaller than Ajman. So delighted to be here at this joint event uh, by UAE Singapore Business Council and Kizad. I thank both for this initiative in organizing this event that offered insights, not just into the opportunities and incentives available to Singaporean companies to establish in Kizad, but also into Abu Dhabi as a whole. As we slowly start emerging from COVID the COVID-19 pandemic, events like this are important to help deepen the understanding of the operating environment in Abu Dhabi and the whole of the UAE by Singapore companies looking to establish themselves here um, as a gateway to the rest of the Middle East and the GCC. As you've heard this morning, um, at least it was allu alluded to, the past year has been a significant one, both in terms of the challenges created by the pandemic, but also new opportunities which have emerged in the region. Despite these challenges, Singapore continues to have robust economic ties with the UAE, which remains our largest trade and investment partner in the Middle East. In spite of the pandemic, bilateral trade was still about 13 billion Singapore dollars um, last year. With strong economic recovery in both Singapore and the UAE being forecast this year, it is likely that we will see an upward trajectory on this. As leading financial and logistics hubs in our respective regions, Many Singapore companies feel at home at the UAE and have continued to choose it as a preferred entry point um, to the Middle East. I was delighted in this regard to hear the experience, experiences of uh, uh, Boosted in, um, in the UAE. And this, these stories are important to sort of bring to life the very real positive experiences that many Singapore companies have here. With the recent amendments to the commercial companies law, as well as the many incentives being introduced for foreign companies, looking to invest here, even more businesses will be looking at, the UA at Abu Dhabi and the UAE as a springboard to access the region and the wider global market of uh, 4.5 billion consumers to which Kizad is connected. As a side note, um, last week I was reading the newspapers here and I came across this wonderful uh, little pullout from one of the newspapers on Kizad. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but it gives uh, some useful insights into the polymer cluster at Kizad. With um, Abu Dhabi, the bilateral Abu Dhabi-Singapore Joint Forum, ADSJF, headed by Chairman of the Executive Affairs Authority, Hichi Haldun al-Mubarak, and Minister for Trade Relations with Singapore, S.C. Swaran, met most recently in March. The latest iteration saw both sides commit to leveraging global technology trends, building on what we have, but also looking to new areas of mutual interest in space, AI, 5G, and of course, semiconductors. They also discuss areas of collaboration in the future economy. This includes um, enabling the exchange of electronic trade documents using Singapore's trade trust framework and working together on low carbon initiatives in hydrogen as well as carbon capture, utilization and storage. Indeed, part of the conversation today also touched on renewables. And this is something I think that we can build upon. Significantly, the ADSGF also announced the Abu Dhabi Singapore Smart Cities Open Innovation Challenge which brings together the Abu Dhabi city government and leading, leading corporates to collaborate with innovative startups and SMEs in Singapore to drive future smart city development in the Middle East. I'm confident this will pave the, pave the way for more business to business collaborations. Um, on this point, I'd like to say that I'm delighted there are almost 200 signups for this webinar this morning. Many of the bigger conglomerates, but many um, SMEs as well. I mean, we're focused on Abu Dhabi today, but I think it's important to highlight that the upcoming Dubai World Expo in Dubai this October will provide another avenue for Singapore businesses to showcase what they have to offer. 
I'm hoping that business delegations from Singapore, um, and I know Brian is looking into this, will visit the expo and also take the opportunity to make side visits uh, to Abu Dhabi and other Emirates. Beyond the usual areas like logistics, financial services, hospitality, and urban solutions, there's also potential for growth in areas like agri-tech, digitalization, media and startups in Singapore and the UAE look to build up our competitiveness in entrepreneurship and in innovation. Yesterday, I had a chance to visit um, the startup ecosystem Hub 71 in Abu Dhabi. I was pleased to learn that a Singapore startup, in fact, several, one Singapore startup, and I think others are looking at opportunities here. Um, so one Singapore startup has, has established a, a presence here. They are in the renewable space. Recently, a Singapore-based uh, media investment company, Vistas Media Capital, also announced that he will set up a production arm in Abu Dhabi's 2454 Media Free Zone to provide content and entertainment production services for Arabic, Bollywood, and Hollywood films. These ventures not only prove that business-to-business -business collaborations can continue under the conditions of the pandemic, but they can also be part of the innovations, innovative solutions taking place in response to the disruption caused by COVID-19. In addition to this, I'm heartened to learn that over the past few months, there have been a number of Singaporeans who moved up here to take up positions in various companies. It shows that there is momentum, there is interest, and there is opportunity. Once again, I would like to thank our speakers today from the Abu Dhabi government in Singapore and the UAE-based companies for sharing their experiences and knowledge, as well as the UAE Singapore Business Council and Kizat for organizing this event. I hope, I hope that today's panel discussions have helped our companies to become more familiar with the business environment and the many opportunities here in the UAE, and has encouraged your interest to visit Abu Dhabi to explore these opportunities in person when the situation permits. And when you do visit, if there's opportunity, I would be happy to, visit, to meet our companies um, from Singapore. Thank you very much. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. We have now come to the end of our webinar on Abu Dhabi, the gateway for Singaporean business to the UAE and the Middle East. On behalf of the UAE Singapore Business Council and the Abu Dhabi ports, I'd like to thank you for your kind attention and participation. Please look out for photos and videos of the webinar on our website at uaesbc.com. Goodbye everyone and stay safe. Thank you.